Well, I suppose the big news of the day is that Shoe and Head is going to be on my channel next th Thursday, which is August 13th at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, to have a discussion about why I left the left, because she has got some questions for me. Now, let's just back up for a second. So I have basically, and I'm I'm being sarcastic, I'm being facetious when I say this, I'm not being serious, you guys have got to understand this, but I'm going to say that I've basically been under siege by socialist in Twitter for the last several days, and, and there are a couple of contributing factors to it. Vosh has contributed to it, and Shu has contributed to it. And the thing that I find so fascinating about socialist Twitter is just the absolute deliberate misinterpretation and distortion of anything that they find threatening. And you better believe that they find someone threatening who leaves the left and then doesn't talk like a raging conservative. They find that very threatening. So they are doing everything that they can to willfully misinterpret every single dang thing I say and my PragerU video and all of that. So there have been a couple kind of like perfect storm scenarios in this in which I have basically told socialist Twitter to go screw and have blocked a boat ton of people. Now, I didn't block Shu because I don't, like, I actually think that she's smart. I think that she's smarter than she comes off on Twitter. And so her and I have gotten into a few tiffs, a few little back and forth, but we had a good DM conversation and we decided to do a video to get clarification on why I left the left. Because one of the things that they're distorting and again, this comes from Vosh, this comes from Shu, this also comes from their willful distortion and derangement, yeah, I said it, around my PragerU video, they have somehow convinced themselves that the reason I left the left is because the left was mean to me and the right wasn't mean to me, and that's just simply not true. That's not true in any way, shape, or form. And so we're going to talk about that next week live on this channel, or if you're watching after August 13th, you can go and find the video on the channel. But what I wanted to do is just provide a little bit more context for some of the reasons that I'm really militantly coming down against people, especially mostly on the very far left at this point. Now, I never considered myself to be a socialist. I never got that far. There were times when I thought I was a progressive, but I think it was, I mean, this is like years ago. I don't think I really understood what that meant at that point. I think I probably just said it because all my friends were labeling themselves as progressives. I thought it was like the next thing, whatever. This was not, this was, this was in a time when I really wasn't paying attention. It was like, fine, whatever. I don't care. Um, but I wanted to just provide some additional insight to lay the groundwork for this conversation because after having a full day of just socialist Twitter losing their minds and acting like raging lunatics. Actually, side note for a second, I am way too old for this stuff. I am way too old for this stuff. Like, if you guys ever see me quit YouTube, it will be because I just can't take it anymore. Like, the utter nonsense that spews from people's mouths, the way they spin themselves up. I have spent years working on myself so that I don't get angry and outraged at every single thing. I can let a lot of stuff just fall off my ducks back. I know that I fight, um, but mostly it's for fun. It's just because I, I enjoy the battle. I have a very high challenge score in my in my, um, in my disc profile, if you saw it, I had like a super high challenge score, which means I'm like, I comp I'm competitive. I like winning. I like having little battles with people. I also embrace both the dark and the light sides of myself, which means that, you know, sometimes I can be a little bit of a bitch. Um, I understand that. But essentially, like, socialist Twitter just takes it to the next level. And so it got to the point where I'm basically blocking everyone that is even remotely related to it at this point that shows up in my feed spewing nonsense because I just don't have time for that. I don't have the energy for this. And yesterday, I also posted this thread that is, I think, one of the things that Shu took issue with. I want to provide a little bit more context for the things I said in this thread as maybe a precursor for the conversation we're going to have next week. And then she can question me and ask me whatever questions she wants and I'll answer them. So here is what I wrote on Twitter yesterday. Now that I've spent my morning blocking a metric ton of Rose Twitter, which are socialists on Twitter, not I'm not be using that as a pejorative. I'm saying these are actual like identifiable socialists. The Rose is the democratic socialist thing that they put in their profile. Now that I've spent a, a morning blocking a metric ton of Rose Twitter, I just wanted to say thank you. 
You see, I was always in favor of increasing the minimum wage, a public option for healthcare, making college significantly more affordable, etc. All the lefty ideas I was okay with. Now, I bring this up because I made a flip comment on Twitter the other day about a Dunkin' Donuts, like two, two separate Dunkin' Donuts within like 20 minutes of each other, screwing up my order. And I was like, if they can't even, if, if the people working these jobs can't even deliver a breakfast order correctly, these are not the people that we should be looking at for how to run the country and how to dismantle systemic racism and build something up. These are not the people whose opinions we should be seeking if they cannot fulfill a bagel order. So I made that comment on Twitter and essentially got bombarded with all these people saying, how dare you talk that way of service industry employees and you're racist and all this crap forgetting that I live in New Hampshire and everyone is white here, so race was not even remotely involved in this equation at all. So after that, um, that's, where a that's where a lot of these things came from, is they were saying, oh, you're like, you know, how dare you say that? All we want is increasing the minimum wage and you just want to keep people down and you just want to treat people like slaves, etc., etc." So I basically came back and said, listen, I was actually in favor of all these things until you morons entered my life. Let's keep going. So I said I was in favor of all those, and then I said, no more. Y'all have made me significantly more conservative, probably more libertarian, really, than I was 24 hours ago, which is true, and I'm going to explain why. Because now I've been hit in the face with the fact that you, Rose Twitter, don't deserve it, won't appreciate it, and ultimately, it wouldn't help you. That's all true because you have no idea what it means to take responsibility for your life. You just expect people like me who have worked hard every day of our lives, for me since I was 15 years old, to do it for you, pay for you, support you, F that, learn to do it yourself. I made that comment because I had a lot of people saying, you don't know what it's like to work a service job. You've never worked a minimum wage job in your life, which is blatant BS. I have worked a ton of minimum wage jobs. I have worked, I have worked in spa, like really fancy spas, cleaning up the locker rooms after all the rich people. I've worked in, you know, back in the day, um, there used to be like video rental stores. Like I, I worked at one that was similar to Blockbuster's movie gallery. I worked there. Um, I have worked all sorts of very, very menial minimum wage jobs, trust. Every human being deserves kindness, empathy, and compassion. Every human being deserves opportunities to su succeed in life. But no human being is entitled to be a leech to suck off the hard work of others. Be an adult, show up, work hard, and stop whining on the damn internet. So congratulations, Rose Twitter. You had someone that was sympathetic to the things you, you pretend to care about that's just walked away, turning around and giving you the middle finger as I go. I doubt the only one, because what does Sargon say? You get what you fucking deserve. So that was my position yesterday, that really these crazy socialists have driven me to become more conservative slash mostly more libertarian. It's more, mostly just like, you know, learn to do for yourself, man. Like, it's not my responsibility to take care of you, and I'm tired of pretending that it is. Now, let me make it really clear why I say that. It's not because I'm necessarily against the idea of social programs when people need it, and it will help boost their lives for a temporary period of time to teach them how to do things, to get them on their feet, whatever it might happen to be. I'm actually completely in favor of social programs that do that. What I'm not in favor of is socialists on the internet demanding that everyone pay everything for them so that they can sleep all day and do nothing productive except like, and, and no, I don't count arguing on Twitter as being something productive. I don't. And that's what they're asking for. I don't want to work the minimum wage job. I want you to pay me $15 an hour to screw up your bagel order at Dunkin' Donuts. And I don't want to apologize for it. I don't want to look at myself and, you know, say, what could I do better in this situation? No, I don't want to pay for you. No, because here's the thing. Things that are given without gratitude, without appreciation, they are not actually helping the situation. They're not helping it at all. Listen, my husband, every Saturday night, my husband goes and does food deliveries. He works with a service in town. He like does uh, food deliveries for local restaurants. And he, and you know, I didn't actually know this was happening for a while, but I found out at some point that he wasn't just like pocketing the money from it and like going and doing guys things. He's sending it to his brother in the Ukraine. 
And that's fine. Like, it's his thing. He can do what he wants with it. But I said to him the other night, I was like, you need to stop supporting him because if you keep supporting him, he's never going to learn to do for himself. And, you know, my husband has to make the decision about what he wants to do. I would really like him to be home on Saturday nights, just hanging out with me and spending time together instead of going and working so he can send all that money over to the Ukraine for his brother who won't get a fucking job. And it's the same thing here. I can, you know what, we can raise the minimum wage. We can put all these social programs in place. We can give you free college. We can do all these things. If you don't appreciate what is given to you, if you don't appreciate the opportunities you have, if you are just going to keep biting the hand that feeds you and keep attacking over and over and over again because you have grown up addicted to outrage, listen, all you 20-somethings that are out there protesting and doing crazy shit, uh, it's not really your fault that you've grown up addicted to outrage. It's the fault of your parents, it's the fault of your teachers. But this is your life, man. It is your life. And at some point, you're going to have to learn that it is not my responsibility to take care of you. That's where I'm at right now. I am completely in favor of helping people who need it. I am I go out of my way to help you. Like, Okay, I'm not even going to go into that. But like, I, I go out of my way on a very routine basis to help people who I think are grateful for it, are going to utilize the help, are going to better their lives, are going to get up, up on their feet, are going to learn to do for themselves. I will help someone like that every single day of the week. Who I will not help and will not advocate for helping are people who have every ability in the world to be successful, to take advantage of opportunities that have been handed to them, many of them on a silver platter and are simply not taking advantage of them because they are lazy, because they want people to pay their way, because they want people to pay off their student loans, because they want they want a guaranteed job working at a certain rate without having put in any of the legwork. You know what happens after you graduate from your free college? You go out and you pay your dues and you learn and you work hard and hopefully you take pride in what you do and the people who take pride in what they do and put in that legwork, they are the ones who are going to get ahead. What I saw from in Rose Twitter the other day are a bunch of lazy, entitled people who would do nothing but piss away all of the opportunities they're given. So for me, this is not about not wanting to help people, not wanting to see people succeed, not wanting to create as much opportunity in this country as possible. This is about a lack of gratitude. If you give things for free to people who do not ha minimally have gratitude, you are not going to help them. It is not serving them. It is teaching them to depend on other people for their success when they could damn well get up and do for themselves. And you know what? If they are if they are not given any option, if they are pushed into a corner and said, you've got to figure this out on your own, that is one of the greatest services that you can give to them because they're going to learn that they are fully capable on their own. They maybe find their purpose. Maybe they'll be following their passion. Maybe they'll go somewhere and create their dream job or their dream company. Who knows what could happen if you don't give it to them without them having to do the work for it. The only thing that makes these opportunities valuable is when we have to put in that legwork, when we have to put in that elbow grease, when we have to go in and sweat it out and try things and fail and learn and grow and improve. That's what makes these opportunities worthwhile at the end of the day. Something that's given to you that's easy, you don't have to work for. It is much harder to appreciate that. And right now, I don't think that, I don't think a $15 an hour minimum wage would be appreciated. I think, what's going to happen if we give a $15 an hour minimum wage? Well, they're going to come right back and say, what about 20? In fact, that's already happened. That's already happened in places where there is a $15 an hour minimum wage. They came right back and said, not good enough. We want 20. And if you give them 20, they're going to say 25 and so on and so forth because they don't appreciate what they've already been given. They just want more and more and more and more and more. So that's what I mean when I say that. Listen, I didn't leave the left because they were mean. <laughs> that is like, <laughs> that is one of the most absurd ideas I've ever heard. I left the left 
because they no longer value free speech. They want to control things I say. They want to control books I read. They want to control ideas I can consider. They want to control who I can watch on the internet, what videos I can watch. They don't want to have discussions. They don't want to have constructive dialogues. They just want to have their way. And they're going to throw hissy fits like children kicking and screaming until they get it. That is why I value free speech. I value compromise and I value gratitude because I am sincerely grateful for every opportunity I have been given. And I have worked very, very hard for everything that I had. And I know that socialist Twitter, who are mostly like 20 somethings who don't have jobs, they don't understand this. They don't understand what it's like to be pushing 40 and have spent years of your life and your own money, because my parents didn't pay my way for school, years of your life, your own money, working to get, you know, several college degrees, build your own business, having struggled, having failed, sometimes not knowing how you're going to pay the bills next month, but you figure it out anyway. That's an experience that will serve a lot of these kids, and they're not going to get it if they have it handed to them. So that's my position. You've got to learn to do for yourself. And we do not, sur we could, listen, I know my husband is doing for his brother because he loves him and he wants him to be happy and it's coming from a good place. It's not going to serve him long term because now he's become dependent. And I, if we have an entire generation of people who become entirely dependent on the government and expect everything to be handed to them because they all got a trophy when they were six. And if they all got a trophy when they were six, why shouldn't they all get free college now? Why shouldn't they all just be handed a job now? Why should, why should they even have to show up and work hard? Why should they care about quality? Why should they care about delivering the breakfast order correctly? Because you take pride in the work that you do. That makes your life better. That makes your experience better. That's a more fulfilling life. I've talked a lot on this channel about how I really believe that there are two types of people in the world. I think there are creators and destroyers. Creators are people who build something, who give something of value to the world, who do something with their life, whether it's, you know, maybe making a YouTube channel or maybe writing a book or building a business or just going in and doing really good work and helping and supporting people and following some sort of purpose, some sort of passion. Those are creators. And if you don't do that, you're going to become a destroyer. And when you become a destroyer, your entire purpose becomes pulling other people down to make you feel better. Rose Twitter, socialist Twitter, those are destroyers, man. Those are destroyers. Those are people who have nothing going on in their lives except to cause chaos and destruction. And I'm not just talking about the riots. I'm talking about like you can you can cause chaos just by being asshats on Twitter. You can cause chaos by, you know, not moving out of your parents' house and getting a real job. You can cause chaos in any number of ways, but that's what they're doing. And the only way out of it is to force them at some point to become a creator. Well, if you keep giving to them, if you keep just handing it to them, if mom and dad keep letting you live in the basement, you're never going to do that. We sometimes perform our best. We have our backs pushed against the wall. I don't mind pushing people's backs against the wall. I'm a coach, man. It's what I do. I will push people's backs against the wall in order to serve them. You know, when I take on new coaching clients, one of the very first things I make them agree to are I have three agreements when I take on new coaching clients. One is I keep confidentiality. I don't talk about what I talk about my coaching clients with. Obviously, I need them to be honest with me. The second thing I say is, well, actually, let me skip over that to the third. Well, no, we'll do the second. We'll do the second. We'll talk about the third in a sec. The second thing I say is my role as a coach is to serve you, not to please you. Because a lot of times I have to say things that do not please them, that make them angry, that piss them off. And that's okay because that's pushing their back against the wall and that might cause some sort of action. That's going to get them to do something that is going to help them out. And the last thing I tell them is that I never guarantee results with anyone I coach because I can't force you to do things. Try as I might. I can push someone's back against the wall every single day. That does not mean they're going to show up. What I see when I look at, and listen, I am fully conscious of the fact that socialist Twitter is not representative of reality. It's Twitter. Twitter is not real life. But when I look at the kids on there, and yeah, I'm going to call them kids. 
They have to have the will to succeed for themselves. They have to want to do it. Joshua says this all the time. He says, Carlin, you can lead a horse to water. It doesn't make it a duck. You cannot force anyone to do anything, but you can create scenarios that make it more appealing for them to show up and do for themselves. That's why I have this position. So if you want to know more, come to the channel next Thursday. Again, that's August. I believe it's the 13th. I could be wrong. August, Thursday, August 13th. It's going to be at 2 p.m. on this channel. She was going to grill me about why I left the left. But I hope in the meantime, I provided a little bit of clarification, but still certainly there's a lot more to discuss, more to come.